some announcements in your bulletin in the back. After our service at 12 o'clock, there's a church ministry fair in the social hall. It's just a fair. You can go around and look at different ministries and see the pictures. And English ministry will be giving out hand sanitizing cream lotion. If they can identify somebody in the picture who you know. And you can always identify me in the middle. Okay, so <laughs> all right. And also there's the sandwiches, uh, Korean style salad sandwich. And um, different kinds of food and chocolates available there. So let, we'll go there afterwards. And um, pray for Cambodia, Vietnam short mission, which will begin uh, start from February 6th. And then uh, not next week, but a week after next, we will have a joint Sunday worship in the main sanctuary. And we will have a um, bilingual service with Korean and English. I'll be preaching. So uh, we will worship there for just for that Sunday. And we have English Ministry Family Retreat. February 19 to 21. And um, if you would like to join us, please do so. Mostly, uh, we'll have about 15 to 20 children and even babies. So if you, um, if you can volunteer to care for them and play with them for a few hours, please come and become a volunteer. Um, it's a family retreat, but we need volunteers too to come and join and we will have Ash Wednesday service on Wednesday evening here. And we will have imposition of ashes where you put ashes on your forehead. And we're doing this because um, for English service, we will do this. And children's ministry looking for volunteer for Sunday school and vacation Bible study. All right, let us begin our worship. 29th of January, uh, let us all stand and recite call to worship. Happy are we when our treasures cannot be quantified. Happy are we when our knowledge is tempered by mystery. Happy are we when our pain is held in balm of love. Happy are we when our delight comes from beyond ourselves. Amen. Let us be seated. Today's hymn uh, is I Just Want to Praise You and My Life is in their classic songs. Um, and we will sing this together to the Lord. I just want to praise you. Please.
like this. My life is in you. So this is, uh, let me explain. You know, when I was growing up in Korea, you go to prayer center, and all the Koreans usually sing in the first, uh, clap on the first beat. It's like this. I can't even do this. <laughs> in Korean song, like, 내게 강가, I got joy like a river, like that. And if you go upstairs, they would, some would do that. But you're supposed to sing, uh, clap on the offbeat. You should go, I got joy in, like that. It's different. So it drives me crazy when somebody starts going, like this. Right? So, so this one, you go, you don't go, my life, not like that. My life is in you, Lord. My, like this, okay? If you if you if you get confused, just do this. My life. <laughs> All right. I'm gonna test you whether you can clap correctly. You like a younger generation, okay? All right. <laughs> Somebody has to lead, yeah. When I when I nod my hands, clap your hands. My life. Thank you so much. I hope that your life gains strength and hope today. I know the weather is kind of like you make you under the weather, but we will get strength and joy. All right. Uh, it's time for prayer. So if our uh, Karen and uh, Sam, if you go back to return to your seats, uh, let us begin with prayer. Wrap us in the arms of your love, our Lord, so that we feel your healing touch. As we gather to worship you today, humble our hearts, teach us patience, and touch us with kindness. Open our eyes that we may see ourselves as you see us. Open our hearts to your spirit of gentleness that our words may be true and our love may be pure. Bind us in a love that does not fail or fade, that we may bear all things, believe all things, and hope all things in Jesus' name. Amen. The, the one who formed us in our mother's womb continues to shape our lives today. Rejoice in the good news. God knows us and loves us as we are. God's love heals our wounds and gives us hope for the time before us. In Jesus' name. All right. Um, let us greet one another with peace of Christ as I sing shalom to you. You can also join me in singing. We're clapping, okay?
Okay, this is a time of sharing of joys and concern. I want to open up to share your joys and concerns or any prayer requests that you have or anything in your mind that you want to lift up to the Lord. I believe that two or more people are gathered and pray in Jesus' name. It really happens. And from my experience, I've never had an experience in which the prayer did not work or either I can't remember, but always worked. So it's a time to ask God in prayer. Any prayer requests or joys and concern? Yes, Alfred. Yes, we'll pray for Alfred's wife. Uh, she's a Kwon Sanim. Yeah, she's, huh? Yes. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. So she's not here today? I'll, I'll, I'll go and pray for her in person. Yes. Any other prayer requests? Yes. Sam? Yeah. Eddie, Eddie is pay, uh, having shoulder pain, and doctor told him, gave him medication and told him to stay home. So he's obeying his doctor's order. Let's pray f uh, for him. I told him we will pray for him today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Okay. I want to lift up prayers for uh, the family retreat that we are planning on 20, uh, 19th to 21st at Hilton Hawaiian Village. Um, I hope that this is a time of really good time of uh, being introduced to our family uh, of God. And uh, it, the theme is living waters, and it would have different kinds of exercises, introduction to a Christian life, and as well as uh, uh, staying, having some quiet time with the Lord. And while we are doing that, the children will have uh, their own good time, and that it would just become a, a re really renewing experience. Uh, that's living water is about giving us life. Um, so it would change the tr family dynamics to another new level. And so that, that we are praying for that. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we lift up um, Mommy and Singo's mother and Alfred's wife to the Lord. As she is going through pain, may she be able to receive the healing from you through her faith in the Lord that you show her that you love her and that you care for her and that through that process she may come out even stronger because of this experience. That in Jesus' name, her pain would go away. Lord, Heavenly Father, and we pray for Ed for the things that he's been going through uh, that a lot of people are worrying, including uh, his 97-year-old mother is worrying for his son. We pray that you may bring healing touch today, that uh, he may not suffer, but be healed and receive the power of the Holy Spirit working in him. And Lord, we pray for all those who are going through difficult stages of life, who are here and who are can, could not join us today, that you may be with them, that you may bless them and strengthen them. And we lift up prayers for the, all the things that we have planned 
uh, to go together, go through things together, that we may find blessedness and happiness of knowing you, Lord. We pray all this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. All right, today um, the hymn is called Nothing But the Blood of Jesus. So we believe that um, our faith is that we believe that Jesus is the Son of God and He shed His blood, and through that, we are renewed every day. So I can experience this for me, like every day when I'm preparing sermon or singing or just walking or driving. I really feel the blood of Jesus really working with me, because without it, I would dare to stand here before you and to uh, just I'll be so uh, I'll be so weak and not be able to stand but because of that I really feel that uh, I'm being washed again and again so I want to share with the, with you this uh, hymn together called Nothing But The Blood What can wash away my sin Nothing but the blood to praise you one more time.
Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Let us uh, recite the scriptures today. Today's scripture comes from Gospel of Luke, chapter 10, verse 16 to 21. I will read one verse, and I invite you to read the second verse, and we will rotate. Whoever listens to you listens to me. Whoever rejects you rejects me. And whoever rejects me rejects him who sent me. The 72 returned with joy and say, Lord, even the demons submit to us in your name. He replied, I saw Satan falling like lightning from heaven. I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. However, do not rejoice that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. At that time, Jesus, full of joy through the Holy Spirit, said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for this is what you were pleased to do. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So before we begin, uh, before I begin preaching about the joy through the Holy Spirit, which is uh, right in the scriptures today, let us pray together by reciting what is on the screen. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, we may listen to your voice and live by your word in Jesus' name. Amen. I hope you are already blessed before beginning the message. <laughs> Today, I'm going to talk about what it means to live as a disciple. Wait, I thought you were going to talk about joy. Yes, but in today's scripture, he said, one of the meaning of living like a disciple is not, a li not only a life of suffering, but it's joyful, joyfulness. So, What's the life of a disciple? We are all, dis once we become baptized, become Christian, we are becoming a disciple. We are disciples. What does it mean to be a Christian? It's the same thing. Or, another way to put it, why do we return to church, the house of prayer, every Sunday? It's like if you drive a car, you know that you have to return to gas station or charging station, get recharged because you need fuel. Yesterday, my car had only like a little bit of fuel, like barely I could make it home. And I was going, I had to go to Costco because that's where I put my gas because they're cheaper. And that was 7.59. And I Googled when it closed, closed at 8 o'clock. So, wow. Am I going to make it? Am I not going to make it? Should I exit to Costco or not? I was thinking, maybe I should. Maybe I should go with faith. But I need the gas. Saturday evening, I have to come to church the next day. And I need the gas. And then, behold, I arrived 10 seconds before 8 o'clock. And <laughs> all the gas pumps were closed except the two on the left. And there was a police car or something blocking. And then I looked. And then there's a gas station guy up there waving his hand. I didn't know what it meant, but I just went and I was the last one. They accepted. And whew. so, and then you, if you have electric car, you need to charge, right? What is the fuel that we need to live as a disciple? That's a question today. Because you came here today on Sunday to recharge something, spiritual fuel. That will get you going. And there are three things that the scriptures say. I'm just going to give you. A, because a lot of people find my sermon too confusing. Or all over the place. Or going tangents. So I'm just going to give you simple, clarifying three points right now. So that you won't get confused in the middle of the way. First, you need word of God. Agree? But it's not as easy as you think because you have to understand the word of God correctly because a lot of people go wrong understanding like that. Second, you need authority 
in the name of Jesus. You might not know this, but you go with the authority. You know, I go with the authority. I'm here with the authority of Jesus Christ because I know that he sent me in January, uh, July 1st last year to this place to serve you, to build you up, to invite you God to God. Authority in the name of Jesus. When we say, be healed in the name of Jesus, it's not because you do something, because you say it, you are transmitting the authority from Jesus, and Jesus received the authority from God. And then the third thing we need is the joy through the Holy Spirit. A lot of people are not aware of this. Because when we think about Christianity or like, like if you think about priests or something like that, we think that they're like always austere and stern and get upset and very strict and then get like and bully, you know, in the wicked, you know. Is that the right name in the wicked musical? The I'm so always like, you have to memorize the Bible verse and get to bed early and pray and all these rules. And then they're always not happy. That's the way people kind of think about Christian faith. But that's totally the opposite because Jesus was full of joy. He knew how to party. He wants us to have a party today in your heart. So that's the third thing. Third thing. So... So make, make it more clear if you look at these. Basically, you need Trinity. Father's word, the Bible. The son's authority. It's called commission. And spiritual power. It's a transformation. When you're transformed, then you're winning. You're joyful. So we recharge. And then when I do benediction, you go out with that force to change the world. That's, what, that's the meaning of being a Christian. It's not because we want to have a good time, which we also do, but we want to go out and change where you are. And I, I haven't seen your, all your families or friends, but change. Okay, that's it. That's today's sermon, okay? So don't get confused. Many people know this verse. For God, so let's read it together. This famous verse. One, two, three. For God so loved the world that he gave his own and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. This is probably the, one of the most important verses people think. And we find that God sent his only son, Jesus Christ, to the world. And as you know, Jesus sent his two groups. Did you know Jesus sent two groups in the Bible? Um, and sending is commission. Mission means send. Mitra means send. So commissioning is you send them. So I'm sent here. And you are sent today. I will send you out. Because if you look at our bulletin, it says at the end, sending forth, right? I mean, we're, we're sending out you out to bless people, change the world. And then uh, what do you do? Evangelism means spreading the good news. Hey, God loves you. You're going to be okay. Spreading the good news. The devil wants to, CNN wants to spread the bad news to you. Oh, that ceiling. The world is going to come to an end. It's going to be recession. We're going to die from another COVID. And all these bad news. But we have a different message. God has your back. So that's evangelism. So, Jesus sent two groups, one, 12 apostles to Israel. And Jesus also sent 12, 72 disciples. We don't know their names. Probably Mary Magdalene was in there. But 72 disciples, two Gentiles, the world. And they're pretty similar. And the process of sending them is called commission. The re, the, and then once we become deacon, deacon like David and David Deacon, Chipsanin and Chonsanin, you are ordained by God, anointed by God to spend the rest of your life for this mission of changing everybody. So we should not forget why we are here in the world. Imagine you got into a car and drove to, uh, where do you go for food, foodland or where? Where do you all go to shop? 
Costco? Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you go to Costco or Sam's. You go there because you needed something. And then you arrive there and you forget what you needed. And then buy a bunch of stuff from on sale. And then you come home and say, I forgot to buy the mosquito swap or something. So that's what it's like when we live our work. If we forget why we are here, then we'll do a bunch of other things and we, f we, we don't do what we were sent to do. So I keep reminding the list of things that clergy should do and then read it in the discipline and then say, I should do this, I should do that, I should do this. And then it really helps me to focus and we keep me grounded. So we are living in this world because God sent his son Jesus and Jesus sent the, to the world us to heal and transform the world. That's why we worship today on Sunday because we receive the proclamation of God's word and then we are sent with a benediction, blessing. So it's like you're being sent with the homework to do in the world. And some of those examples are like this. If we look at the next verse. When Jesus was sending off his apostle, Jesus said, Proclaim this message, kingdom of God, God, heaven is near. Heal the sick and drive out the demons and freely give as you receive. Now, heal the sick means don't be a, that does not mean you have to be a doctor. So physical healing, you go to a doctor, please, okay? But there are a lot of sickness in the heart that you can mend and brokenhearted. And back at the time, there was a not found a distinction between uh, physical and mental or mind heal healing, spiritual healing. So it's encompassing everything. So this is called PhD ministry. PhD, and I added G because in the Bible I found G. P is proclaim the good news. B is, uh, H is heal the brokenhearted. You can do this. You can heal the brokenhearted around you. There's so many people who are broken in the heart. I'm broken. Please heal me too. Whenever Sam says to me, how are you? <laughs> I'm healed. Even in the restroom. <laughs> I, I'm, I, honestly, I'm healed. And you drive out the demons, which means if you see people fighting, you just stand there. Your presence would just drive out that sometimes. And just pray silently. And then in the Bible, it says you give freely, which means you give generously. You know, giving is something you have to, giving is such a blessing because the fact that you can give is that you have it. The more you give, the more God will give it to you. So these are some of the things that we do as a disciple. And then, so if we look at, we will look at what the disciples need from number one. The first thing the disciple need is to listen to the word of God, which you are doing right now. The word of God. And this is just a bonus for you. You know the word of God? There are so many versions that are wrong. There are some criteria, of, of some of which I'm going to share. First, it has to be ethically responsible. If somebody says the word of God and keep you as a slave or keep promoting slavery, that's ethically misunderstanding the nature of God. And historically accurate. This is very difficult, but not only scientifically, but historically, it has to understand what that word meant at the time and then be able to understand and translate to what it means to our time. That's historic accuracy. Second, third, it has to be applicable to our life. And fourth, it has to be, Holy Spirit has to inform us. And we can, through, uh, can understand the Bible, tradition, even our reason and our experience of faith. You know, we need to have this balance because otherwise it becomes superstition. And there are so many superstitions going around when I listen to the radio preaching. People get, can just about say anything and get away with it. So this is a very difficult topic, I, this, but the Word of God. And then uh, Luke 10, today's first verse, he said, 
Whoever listens to you listens to me. Whoever rejects you rejects me and rejects the one who sent me. Which means that when they rejected Jesus, they were rejecting God. When they rejected the disciples, they were rejecting Jesus who was sent by God. That's why in 1 Corinthians 2, Paul said, When I came to you, I did not come with eloquence or human wisdom. So, that's why eloquence and human wisdom is you can hear all kinds of talk in the TikTok or TED speech. They're eloquent, funny, comedians, and human wisdom. They have some truth in there and all that. But that's not from God. We only proclaim to you the testimony about God. It sounds foolish at times to the world. But testimony is powerful because it's true, not because it's tempting and sounds sweet or pretty. You know, pretty and tempting is what devils does well. So if you think, if you feel like you're feeling, hearing a feel-good message, but, but not a biblical message, that's a problem. So we need a balanced and correct word of God that holds a power in our life. So if you want to proclaim the good news as the disciples sent out to the world, what we want to do, we need to first hear and experience the good news in your life. So when I express to you what the Bible says and you look at it and you take it in and then you practice that in your life and then you realize, wow, this is the word of God, the living word of God that really works. So let's get back to today's verse. Verse seven, so When the 72 were commissioned, they came back with joy. So they were sent out and came back with joy. And they said, Jesus, even the demons submit to your name. Wow, amazing. But then Jesus replied, I have given you the authority to trample over snakes. And it was really important. Nothing will harm you. And here we come to the second element of being a disciple is that you go with the authority to overcome anything. You have the authority to overcome your addictions. You have the authority to overcome hatred or a sense of trying to be vengeant, vengeance to others. When Jesus was teaching the people in the temple courts and he was proclaiming the good news, authority, when Jesus was teaching the people in the temple court in the, in the Bible, and chief, chief priests and teachers came and said, tell us what authority you are doing this. Who gave you this authority? And the answer is throughout the Bible in Luke 4, but it's Jesus quotes Isaiah 61, which you are familiar with. Let me just share with you. The spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me because the Lord anointed you, me, to proclaim the good news to the poor. He sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim the freedom from the captives and release from the darkness the prisoners. So that to proclaim the ear of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn and to provide for those who grieve in Zion, to bestow on them. God will give us crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, and garment of praise instead of despair. Now, do you see what's going on? Instead of, what's ash? Ashes symbolize of death. Instead of death, beauty. Instead of mourning, joy. Instead of spirit of despair, praise and thanksgiving. And that is what it means to be refueled by God. And that is possible because we come with the authority when the Holy Spirit is with us. So in Matthew 28, it's called Great Commission. The last time Jesus says, the risen Lord said, the all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Therefore, we should go make disciples and baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And Jesus said, I will always be with you. You know, I am with you always, forever. This is the most amazing thing to say. You know, when my dad passed away with cancer, he only had six months to live, and one month before he died, he, his last word for me, too, one, always be truthful whatever you do. 
That's one. Second, I will always be with you even though I leave you in body. And I really don't know if my dad is with me right now because I can't see. But I can't understand what he wanted to say. He loved me. He was so sad to leave his son at the age of 57, his son being in the 20s. Sometimes I try to look around and see if my dad is around. But I felt that it was his way of saying how much he loved me. If you know, if you if you're on door, if you, I know you guys are a lot of you guys are young, but if you have your own daughter and your your daughter commits a sin and don't know Christ, then your daughter is going to hell. Okay, for example. If you love your daughter, you might even risk going to hell with your daughter because you love her. That's how deep a love can be. And that's how God loved us, that he died for us because he wanted to be uh, carrying those sins and take that thing that we should be taking for us. And that's what Jesus said here. I will be with you always, forever. It's a love statement. So when we feel the presence of God, we live in the authority to drive out the evils in Jesus' name, to overcome fears and anxieties in Jesus' name. It works because the authority given to us because each Sunday we are being sent off to, with a new mission. And that mission is to live Jesus within and around simple to memorize to live Jesus within and around so far I've been sharing with you what we need as a life of disciples and first we need if you can remember you need the true biblical understanding of the word of God that is not of human origin but from heavenly revelation second we are sent every week with the authority of Jesus Christ so you are no, not anybody. You go with the authority of Jesus Christ. And sometimes people will not recognize that. But it's their problem, not yours. You do your job. Because you are sent with authority. The disciples who had been commissioned by Jesus in today's passage did these two things and then when they came back they were amazed because if you look at the verse 17 again they said wow Jesus even the demons submit to our, your name what an exciting experience you know driving out demons is such an exciting thing because I've done that many times and overcame the hatred within me many many times in the name of Jesus but then they were missing one thing and this is the theme of today's sermon what is that third component? So you look at verse 20. However, it's really important. That's what the way the but is very important always. Nevertheless, but however, do not rejoice because the Spirit submits to you. But rejoice because your name is written in heaven. Let's think about this is very important. What's the difference between these two kinds of joy? A rookie disciple were joyful because they felt the power to win the evil. Which is good too. But Jesus said, don't rejoice with that. Don't rejoice because you submit a demon. I mean, demons should be submitted, uh, subdued. But don't rejoice for winning over bad guys. You're not, your life is not about winning over bad guys. Rejoice that your name is written in heaven. Which means rejoice that you are recorded. Your status and identity have changed to be in the in the book of heaven. You know, these two seem to be the same thing, but it's a huge difference because there is a time for spiritual war, but there is also a time for spiritual peace and joy. And Jesus is saying, you, need, we, you are going to win the spiritual war, but that's not the end of it all. You need to be in heavenly state of peace and joy. Which means, to make it easier, if we are always sad because the world is so evil, or if we live our life in sadness because 
we are in suffering because we are aware of our sins and imperfections. We are always repenting all the time. And, and it's like that's, that's what Satan did to us in the Garden of Eden because he wanted us to eat from the fruit of knowledge of good and evil. So we know we are evil and we always are sad. But that's not trusting in God's gospel fully because we should not just rejoice because we can overcome the world. Uh, although we, can, we will overcome the world, we should rejoice because we experience the taste of heaven in our life. So we all think that Jesus suffered and died and he's like, we always see Jesus in his blood and dying. But you know what? When Jesus was dying on the cross, that was the happiest moment of his life. Jesus wept for Jerusalem. Why? Because Jesus loved Jerusalem. Jesus was fully aware of who sent him and why he was sent and what he came to do. That's why Although physically he was the, in the most painful moment on the cross, that's when he felt the climax of his greatest love for us. It's being achieved to take away the sins of the world. So he died a happy death. So in verse 21, you see, at that time, Jesus, full of joy through the Holy Spirit, you know, I try to find the portraits of Jesus for you in the bulletin. It's very hard to find the laughing and joyful Jesus. Jesus is either sad or like in pain. But you know, the Bible says he was full of joy because confident. And he praised the Father. And Romans 14 also says, For the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. So, let's compare these two sentences. Do not rejoice that you want the Spirit submit to you, which they will, and that's a joyful thing, but rejoice that your name are written in heaven. So many people think that the word of God is most important, which it is. However, people rarely interpret the word of God correctly in their life situation, in a balanced way. Many people achieve great things in the name of Jesus Christ. However, they get burned out and end up fighting over what later proved to be a matter of doctrine. There's so much schism, you know. They think they're the right and everybody's wrong. There, there's so many. There's hundreds of Presbyterian denominations in Korea. They just invent a new denomination every time they disagree. We need a healthy understanding of the word. We need to live with the authority as a, of Jesus Christ as a conqueror. However, Jesus taught us we need true joy, knowing that our name are written in heaven. It's an unchanging and ultimate source of joy through His Holy Spirit. So you, you might know somebody who's been in church all their life and who's been a pastor all their life or who's been generational Christian, but you don't find them looking happy. Then there's something terribly wrong. Because today when we were starting our service, we said, happy are we. Happy are we. Happy means blessed. Happy are we. Happy are we. If you see, like, Christians are not as ha not happier than other people sometimes. And that's, something's not right. God called us to be disciples. And life of disciple is a happiness. Even if you suffer sometimes, it's a, something that you have to do with a purpose and for good reason for your loved ones. If we are always sad because of our sin, then we are not believing the forgiving power of the blood of Jesus Christ. If we are anxious, then we really are not ass having assurance of salvation from God. There is no reason for us to be anxious at all. Even when we are about to face death, there is no reason for us to be anxious at all. There are monks in the Middle Ages where they torture themselves trying to physically imitate after Christ, do you think that's biblical? No. God did not tell us to torture ourselves for no reason. 
But they did it for hundreds of years for no good. Some preachers keep threatening people with a story of hell and condemnation so that people obey out of fear. But God does not want you to obey out of fear. God wants to be a cheerful giver and follower with the real power. It's like car. God does not want you to push the car from the back. He wants you to fuel your car and just drive like an EV. So let me conclude. In 1 Thessalonians, you all know, we just always, you know, that's the truth. We just always. I hope that we can do that. I can do that. Rejoice always. Even when we have a problem, we rejoice. Knowing that God will heal our first wife's pain. In advance, pray continually and give thanks in all circumstances. And that is your homework today. And that's God. Will for sending you. Today, Jesus Christ is sending you as disciples to the world because you heard the word of God and you have received the authority in Jesus' name. And most importantly, you received the power of the Holy Spirit as a source of joy, peace, and righteousness. When Jesus was risen and came to disciples in John 20, Jesus said this. Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I'm sending you. And with his breath on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sin, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Let's think about it. And believe. For the next one week, you are commissioned. Like me, here to your families and your friends and your workplaces. The life application questions today is first, do I have a listening ear for God's word? Second, do I view myself as having been sent by God to the world? And third, do I dwell in the negative frame of mind so that even during the sermon I become critical instead of focusing on the word? Or do I rejoice always because of the Holy Spirit in our heart? And that is the message for you today. Let us pray together by reciting the last, this page. May we live a life of a true disciple with the power to transform the world because of the joy we have through the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us sing Jesus Remember Me as we gather. Offering, uh, if you want to give offering today. <laughs> of every blessing. You are our refuge and our strength. Even before we were born, you knew us completely. We have watched, you have watched over us all the day of our lives. Receive these offerings and the gratitudes of thankful hearts. Grow our ministries of your church that we may bring your message of love to the world that knows not your grace and mercy. May God send you forth with the words of love and joy on your lips. May Christ send you with the acts of love in your deeds. May the Spirit send you with the power to transform your lives. May you go in the power of God's love to be ambassadors of peace, justice, and compassion in Jesus' name. Amen.